Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Global Cooling Rundown for the week of September 2nd to September 11th, 2017. Less than a month ago, Taiwan, 10 days in a row above 36 degrees Celsius, a new record since they began keeping records in 1897, wouldn't have anything to do with the CO2 temperature weather stations placed exactly at street corners in the cities compared to what's on the university campuses. Nice look at some of the new cell towers disguised as trees. And those of you looking for earthquakes that disappear off the USGS site, here you go. Here's a nice rundown of the ones that occurred over the last week in Taiwan. The last part of August, first week of September, is supposed to be dog days of summer scorching. Snow on top of Mount Washington. Snow in Labrador, Canada. Snow in Quebec. Indescribable cloud formations in Hinesville, Georgia. And Mamatis clouds over Michigan. And here's a low-tech solution to reinventing the greenhouse as we move our agriculture indoor as this grand solar minimum intensifies from this winter forward. China outlaws ICOs. They had real trouble even trying to halt Bitcoin trading. That's an uphill battle. 60 exchanges affected. People's Bank of China coming out with news release. Maintain the normal financial order. Funny, coming from... Inflated P&L sheets that caused the 2008 grandest bubble of all time to crash. And they're going on about multiple risks and false asset risks. Even after the 2015-16 crash, these exchanges here are allowing you to exit your funds right now. Motion, Bodhi, and Decentraland. The other exchanges suspended trading, but your accounts are still open. Interesting timing. Just six weeks before the 19th National Congress of the Communist Party of China... This is where the entire Communist Party gets together for the next five-year plan, but they need to show everybody that they are just doing so good operating the economy in the country. And you'll notice, prior to every one of these events, there are measures put in. This time, it's capital controls, trying to ramp up the trade surplus, IPO suspensions in 2007, rules on limits for house purchases to try to quell the economy in 2011, and here we are, 2017, more measures encouraging to invest in the weak state enterprises that were poorly run anyway. IPOs are taken away from the traditional investment instruments. Let's see who's going to be in control of the new exchanges and IPOs when it's reworked and a whole bunch of new regulations are in. Because in the new five-year plan, blockchain is included in that and they are pushing forward. They're talking with Ripple for cross-border payments. Wild card, though, the gloomy millennials. There's 380 million of them that understand they will never own a house and they will probably not have a good paying job either. They are voracious internet users. And where are they spending all their time? Trading cryptocurrency. And as I said before, the ramp up and intensification of the grand solar minimum is going to go lockstep with the awareness on the planet to get everybody into this cryptocurrency system. So here's your timeline when the ICOs and the exchanges are going to start back in China. Good afternoon, everyone. The X9 flare unleashed from the sun two days ago. Aurora is visible as far as Tennessee. Radio blackout where you see red. Also, Mexico hit by an 8.1 earthquake. Earth-sun connection there. And how quickly we forget the X flare that occurred July 23rd on the back side of the sun. And as the primer fields on the sun start to collapse in, it looks like we're going to follow this pattern where it's above and below and above and below. Strange electrical phenomenon in the skies. Space station over a geomagnetic storm and then some sort of blue plasma remnant. Sprites in the sky morphing form, actually forming tails now. And these northern lights you see with deep purple in them, those are from August 31st and September 2nd, not the auroras that are coming in on this storm. Hurricane Irene making landfall across western Florida, 140 mile per hour winds. We saw the devastation through the Caribbean it left. NOAA themselves admit that more severe hurricanes occurred during the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation in its warm phase. Comparison here for you, 
And you've heard that Irma is the strongest storm ever. Well, here's the whole list, actually. I really want to focus on the 1930s storms, which there are three on this list out of the 25, occurring at the peak of the Atlantic multi-decadal oscillation warm phase. Why are we really not talking about longer term cycles? Everybody's talking about Hurricane Harvey caused by CO2, 50 inches of rain, yet they forget about Beulah, 1967, 30 inches of rain. Double typhoons passing over Taiwan, July 2017, the last time that happened, 50 years ago, 1967. Let's talk about longer cycles. 400 year, 2000 year, grand solar minimum intensification, solar activity forecast, solar cycle 25 and 26, bringing us back into Maunder minimum repeat. And as our magnetosphere weakens, galactic cosmic rays are increasing. We've already seen a 19% increase in the New England area of the United States. Now, why would I bring up galactic cosmic rays? Well, they're directly tied to increasing cloud formation during grand solar minimums, specifically between 15,000 and 18,500 feet, which means more intense storms because we're entering this grand solar minimum, not CO2. This is what they're really not telling you. So let's take a look deeper to see what the forecast is going out into the future over the next five years.